You heard what Hikawa said, right? This world is about to be swallowed by chaos. It's called the Conception, the rebirth of the world. While us fans of Shin Megami Tensei eagerly await new information for the upcoming Shin Megami Tensei 5, the Nocturne HD Remaster is here to hold us over until then. Originally released for the PlayStation 2 in 2003, it established a lot of the conventions for most, if not all, of Atlas's future games. It's a very popular game with the SMT fanbase and is considered by some to be the best JRPG of all time. So with this remaster coming out for the Switch, PS4, and PC featuring upgraded visuals and lots of new quality of life fixes, this version could become one of the most accessible entries in the series. As a fan of the series myself, this is actually my first time playing through this entire game. So does it hold up nearly 20 years later? Let's find out with a spoiler free review. In Shin Megami Tensei Nocturne, you play as a human who becomes part demon during a world ending event known as the Conception, which get this, is also essential to saving it. The world as we currently know it is losing power and will soon fade into nothingness, but the conception can prevent that from happening. The conception transforms Tokyo into something known as the Vortex World, which is a world that essentially exists in a state of limbo until somebody with a strong enough will comes along to create a new world in its place. Oh, and it's populated almost entirely by demons along with a few human survivors. While most games feature some sort of world-altering event at some point during their story or near the ending, Shin Megami Tensei Nocturne gets it out of the way at the very start, which feels distinct and really helps set the tone for what the rest of the game will be like. And despite the Vortex world literally having just spawned into existence, it feels like a fully realized place with a history all its own, as if you've been thrown into an alternate dimension where the world has always been like this. Just walk up and talk to some of the demon inhabitants and you'll immediately find yourself getting absorbed by how dynamic and unpredictable conversations can be. As you progress through the story, you'll realize that different human characters you meet all have differing ideas for what their ideal world should be, and through a couple of steps and the opportunity to create it, they can go on to realize that new world. You know the game's whose reason will you align with tagline? That's what this whole game is about. You have to decide which reason appeals to you the most and is another part of why people love this game so much originally. It's very much a story that you build based on your choices and relationships, with some interesting events happening between the main characters as they develop, with your choices affecting the outcomes. All that being said, the plot isn't really in your face most of the time, with the story mostly involving you learning about the world as you work on getting stronger and crushing foes that stand in your way. While the game's progression is usually straightforward, I did get lost a couple of times between major plot points, but I found that talking to people almost always helped point me in the right direction. So take it from me, it's important to talk to whoever you see, whether it be a demon or a soul of one of the humans killed during the conception, as they can give you helpful tips about where to go in the story. You've probably heard a lot about how this game plays. It's hard, it's unforgiving, it's confusing. There is some truth to that, but I will say that if you are patient, really patient with this game, and you're really able to dig into its mechanics and world, you shouldn't have too hard of a time. What I really enjoy about this game, or series in general, is the emphasis on building up your own party and interacting with the demons you fight. You start out on your own, but how your party develops is solely up to you based on who you recruit to fight alongside you. The process of recruiting demons is ridiculously fun as well, thanks to the negotiation mechanic. In battle, you can speak to the demons you fight and try to convince them to join your party. This process is funny because you get to see all of the different personalities from these demons, whether you try to recruit them or just ask them for money or items. Sometimes they'll join you without too much of a hassle, and other times you'll be giving them a lot of money and items and even your health, and they'll just leave you. The fact that the negotiations are largely random makes the demons feel like individual characters. Not every pixie is going to respond the same way, and I really enjoy the detail that it added. Your enemy might even offer you an item or money in exchange for you not killing them, and sometimes after battle, your allies will give you items right after they level up to show appreciation of your fighting skills and leadership. So there's a lot of battles, and all of these mechanics keep it feeling very dynamic. Beyond negotiations, Nocturne takes this simple turn-based formula and adds a unique system called Press Turn that's both strategic and engaging. The basic premise of the press turn system revolves around hitting your enemy's weaknesses in order to gain extra turns. Missing attacks has you lose a turn, and hitting your enemy with an element that they absorb has you losing all of your turns. The kicker is that these rules also apply to your enemy, so if you don't have your weaknesses covered, you'll be left wondering why your enemy got so many turns, it didn't have a fair shot, and you keep dying. Having the right party is very important for going into some of these fights. Furthermore, you can change your Demi Fiend's elemental weaknesses by ingesting a different Magatama. This also changes the skills that he'll learn after leveling up. So yeah, there's a lot to dig into, and there's more to find as well. Beyond battles, there are plenty of labyrinth-like dungeons to explore and figure out as you progress through the story. They're all designed differently with a different gimmick in mind. 
Some will have you navigating an area where you can flip yourself and walk on the ceiling, and others will have you feeling like you're in a funhouse. I will say that they are cleverly designed, and I enjoyed exploring the unique identities of each dungeon, with one later in the game blowing my mind. However, I found some of the late game dungeons to be a little bit on the longer side and a little frustrating with how I had to trial and error my way through them. Luckily, the frequent safe rooms didn't make it constantly feel like I'm at risk of losing my progress. Coming off of Shin Megami Tensei 4 and 4 Apocalypse as my first Shin Megami Tensei games, Nocturne does somewhat pale in comparison in terms of quality of life, however the HD version of Nocturne still has some great improvements that make it much more manageable for your average player than before, especially when it comes to difficulty. Dying to bosses that feel impossible is not a fun feeling for most players, so it's nice to see that this game has a new merciful difficulty for those who want it, essentially making it impossible to die by making enemies significantly weaker and reducing the random encounter rate, along with rewarding more money and EXP after battles. Hardcore SMT fans will likely stay away from this option because it makes the game way too easy, but it's a great addition for those looking for a more accessible experience. It also has some practical uses too. Say you want to explore a dungeon, but those random encounters are getting in way too much. It would make getting through some dungeons so much more bearable, and as a matter of fact, on a few dungeons I turned it on because I really wanted to focus on completing it, especially since the normal encounter rate did get on my nerves at times. There were times where I just gotten out of an encounter, took 5 steps, and suddenly got pulled into another one, so once again, it's nice to see the option there for those who have little patience and it's free DLC. Other quality of life features in this game include the option to suspend your save file whenever you want in case you don't want to commit to a dungeon or something, the ability to select your skills your demons inherit during fusion, an amazing addition that makes it feel more modern, and better overall camera controls compared to the original. All of these ensure that Nocturne is one heck of an accessible SMT game. In terms of visuals, the game looks really nice for what it is, a modernized version of the original game. While you can still tell that it is originally a PS2 title, the solid art direction as well as the new HD resolution brings the visuals together really nicely. While some textures might seem a little fuzzy, overall the game holds up very well. New to this remaster is voice acting too. The new voices for all of the characters fit really well and I enjoy them, and it makes the game a lot more enjoyable. Not everything has been dubbed, but where there is voice acting, it's really good. According to this, there's a group of demon worshippers who call themselves the Ring of Gaia. And they're right here in Japan. Apparently, they believe in this book of prophecy called the Scripture of Miroku. Unfortunately, despite being a remaster of a nearly 20 year old game, the performance isn't the best on Switch. While the game is capped at 30 FPS, there are some stutter issues in battles, such as during attacks that cause a lot of visual effects on screen. The Fiend battles come to mind as well when I mention this, though most of the game doesn't get that bad. While the music is great on the whole, some of the battle music tracks sound noticeably compressed, which is especially noticeable going from the amazing field music and then into battle. It makes me wish the game had the OST version to hear it in its full glory, especially because this game is composed by Shoji Meguro, who also composed for Persona and Catherine. While $50 might seem a bit high for a remaster of a PS2 game, I do think this game is worth the investment if you really enjoy JRPGs, specifically from Atlas. It has an engaging story, an awesome combat system that feels rewarding, top tier music, and to top it off, pretty good voice acting newly added for the remaster. Oh, and the game isn't short either, clocking in at around 50 or so hours to beat. You can spend even more time in the game if you want to see the other endings as well, not to mention that New Game Plus gives you a new cosmetic jacket for the Demi Fiend. Taken all together, the HD Remaster isn't just the definitive version of the game with its enhanced visuals and quality of life improvements, but it's a great experience in its own right that I liked a lot. While Shin Megami Tensei 4 may still be my overall favorite SMT game of all time, this game was really amazing to experience for my first time and makes me even more excited for Shin Megami Tensei 5 coming later this year, especially because there seems to be some parallels between the two. So if you're interested in Shin Megami Tensei and have been eyeing the games for a while, there is no better time to jump into the mainline series than now. And with that, I'd like to thank you all so much for watching. Make sure you subscribe to Game Explain and ring the bell for a lot more on Shin Megami Tensei 3 Nocturne and other things gaming too. Till next time.